Hello and welcome to this meditation. You can now allow yourself to relax into your heart chakra. In your heart chakra is where your entire universe lives. This is where you can explore the connection that you share with your creator. Awakening to your connection that you share with your creator takes perfect focus. This focus comes from a focus on love within yourself. Take the time to focus on this love now. You will find the depth of love that you desire for your creator through your commitment to being with yourself completely. You are worthy of self-exploration and connection to your holy creator. As you begin to go deeper, you are dissolving anything and everything that is out of alignment with the love that resonates in your being. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. It's safe to now open up to your third eye's divine vision of God's love for you and for all. Any fear of going deeper can be released as you feel heaven's love pour throughout your being in through your crown chakra. Take a moment to enjoy this love filling you up and delivering you into a greater level of awareness of self. Love is who you are. Love is what you are. May you now choose to accept only this reality. Whatever it is that has kept you from this reality is to be released for all eternity. You can now let yourself relax and feel the comfort of this new vibration. Love has transformed you because you have allowed it to. Allow yourself to now listen and hear the voice of God. In every moment that you allow love to lead in your world, you will feel and see it happen in that instant. Choosing love is choosing wholeness. You are one with God who built your life to align with His. The creation that you are has come forth through the love that you share with your Creator for now and all eternity. As you allow this love to bring you into greater alignment, and greater relationship with your Creator, you can ground this energy into your physical, present reality. Thank you all, and Namaste. Hi, we're Stan and Johanna, and today we're providing the card reading for the Sunday service. Mm -hmm. um, we're yeah. using the Angels, Gods, and Goddesses deck. Yeah, by Tony Carmen Salerno. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, that was the deck. So, um, first card that we have is Angel mm -hmm. of Relaxation. Mm -hmm. And underneath uh, the card, it says, like, let go of desired outcomes and you will get what you want. So to me, it says perfectly, like, um, that you're always a co-creator with God and that you also have a free will. So that's why God needs you to actually step out of his way and not try to do the things yourself, but really partner up with God so that you can actually allow God to bring his good to you instead of like um, go out and grab the good on the outside. It's better to work with God together and to actually like attract it to you instead of like doing it yourself because then you will push it further and further away right? yeah remember you're already one with your dreams um like in god's truth you already um have your dreams um you're created in oneness with god and your dreams are for you it's just a matter of feeling that to be true and clearing the blocks towards it and listening to god every step of the way and choosing to be happy right now, no matter where you are or how it looks like on the outside. Um, because it's always perfect where you are right now. There's a reason why you are exactly where you are right now. And it's not the thing that makes you happy. It's God that makes you happy. And you cultivate that from within. And um, it is all about God. It's not about the thing. It's not about X, Y, Z. It's about you and God, your relationship with God. And that alone shall, like, fill you. That alone is enough. And that's where all your happiness, joy, love comes from. Um, that's what all... That's what it all is about. I remember Jeff and Shalia saying, yeah, don't use, let's say, the teachings just to get a thing. It's about all your relationship with God. And naturally from there, your life will evolve and will yeah, turn better and better. It's naturally, but ultimately it's about your spiritual ascension. Yeah, so the next card that we pulled is this one, um, Angel of Emergence. And here it said, it's time for the real you to emerge. So what does this card say to you? Um, that like you probably already had for a long time, like a feeling within you where you felt like um, that it was time to show the true you. Mm -hmm. And... Well, this is actually like a sign that it's, you have the okay to go and to show your true authentic self and to know that you're not alone in this, that you're always supported um, by God and the angels in heaven and um, mm -hmm. just trust in yourself because God created you perfect and it's natural for you to be your true divine powerful self. There is... Nothing that can stop you if you know who walks with you, and that's God, right? Yeah, the only one who can stop you is yourself. Yeah, yeah, and it's really time to show your true self. So the next card that we have is Goddess of Compassion. It said here, self-criticism is diminishing your sense of self-worth. Um, yeah, so again... Let's say, I feel like it goes again hand in hand with the first card, like all desired outcomes, um, and you will get what you want. So just let go of judgment, judgment of where you currently are at, judgment of yourself, judgment of things. Just like ju let go of judgment completely and know, like, Definitely, I say that like, you are divine. That's God's truth. You're created perfect in God's image, and you're just misperceiving yourself um, if you're not seeing yourself as already divine. And there's nothing we need to do or achieve or 
be or have in order that we become it we already are it and it's safe to accept that we are enough you are enough and to love yourself through it like let go of the outside don't let yourself be controlled by what's showing up currently in your life remember the change starts from within the moment you change from within everything will follow in accordance and don't give your power away like don't give your power to the outside um god wouldn't want that that you do that then you're just gonna get controlled by the outside um so you have all the power just take your power back remember who you are that you create your reality and um your self-worth or your own worth is not tied down to anything it's um it's in your hands and um god only determines your worth and you're perfect mm -hmm. and the last card that we pulled for you is angel of space clearing it said it's time to clear old negative thoughts and feelings yeah so again if there are unloving beliefs um, that are not uh, in accordance to god's truth about yourself about where you are in life or about um, work or service or about your twin flame union um, choose to clear those beliefs and thoughts or those ideas because they are not serving you they're then standing in between you and your dreams you and your good because only you can block your good um, nobody else can do that and you're absolutely worthy of having it all mm -hmm. yeah yeah so this was today's card reading yeah we um hope you liked mm -hmm. the card reading of today and we hope you like the rest of the sunday mm -hmm. service yeah take care thank Bye. you Hello and welcome. My name is Fabian. I am a unionist and today I will be introducing us to the sermon by Danny and Christina titled How to put God first. Thank you so much for tuning in. I can say that we have a wonderful sermon awaiting us today. We are going to learn, well, how to put God first, how to have a proper relationship with God and how to connect with God. Fittingly enough, I watched a Life Purpose class today, number 33 by Jeff and Shalia, which was uh, perfectly aligned with that topic. And they were discussing the difference between a job and your life purpose. Now, there are so many opportunities in life where you can choose. One is better than the other though, because one is aligned with love, is aligned with God, and the other is not. And in that life purpose class, Jeff and Shalia share about a medical doctor. And this made me wonder, and in my mind I was telling myself a story based on that metaphor that Jeff and Julia shared. Imagine that you are becoming a medical doctor. It is a 10 year or definitely a multi year effort where you have to show up every day. And you have to work really hard. You have to put in many, many hours and you have to go through uncomfortable situations. But you have one goal in mind. Getting um, the certification and becoming a medical doctor because you believe that this is going to serve you. And so you are showing up every day because this is 
beneficial for you. So you believe. And eventually, one day, you will be a medical doctor. And you're looking back and you're seeing all of these years as I have put in. And now, voila, I am here. But how do I feel in my heart about it? Have I put God first? Well, some of us are called to become medical doctors and when that is the case, you will experience great harmony in your heart. But what if you merely thought it is going to provide you with everything you need and then find out later it's not? This is a job versus your life purpose. This is putting God first versus putting society first. Because maybe in that example, the one that became a medical doctor really listened to his parents' advice on what to do with his life. Well, the best advice that I can give you, son, is to become a medical doctor. And you will be successful and you will have the life of your dreams that I could never have myself. And so that son is going into the world trying to fulfill the desires and dreams that his parents were not able to accomplish. But what if these dreams are not in alignment with that person themselves? They won't feel good. And my question to you is, where are you not honoring God first? Or limiting God in your life? Limiting God's ability to show up in your life because God is truly unlimited. And God can create miracles in your life to free you from any obstacle, to free you from any burden, to free you from anything that is holding you back, from anything that doesn't feel good to you. And in that example of the life purpose class, the medical doctor is finding out <laughs> eventually that they actually love surfing. So they become a surf teacher and they are like, well, I just want to be cool. I just want to be at the beach. And that's where they really feel uh, desired and valuable and recognized, right? And this is what it means to put God first, to really honor your calling in your heart. And Danny and Christina are going to go much deeper into what that means. And they are going to provide an excellent example um, from their own life. How does it actually look like to put God first in your everyday life? Well, Danny and Christina are sharing an excellent example there and um, talk about a broken window. Please enjoy today's sermon titled, How to Put God First. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Church of Union Sunday service. My name is Danny. My name is Christina. And we are your ministers for today's Church of Union Sunday service. I'm here to bring you a nice, juicy sermon about God putting God first and why that is important and how that impacts your life and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So please join us with your opening ohms followed by our opening prayer.
Please join us for the opening prayer. I am the only child of God, forever part of him. I am created by him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary, where I keep his holy creation sacred. I will only allow in his voice. I will only accept his word. Today, I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to his teachings through his divine channel. I will honor what he has spoken and accept it as his will. I will be obedient to his word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, Om, Amen. Great. So welcome. So welcome. We'll get started. Today we wanted to really talk about being with God, as we mentioned in the beginning, and Mm -hmm. I think that this is a good topic to talk about, um, especially when you're going through challenges or maybe what feels like a harder time. And we have found that putting God first and being with God has really shifted our perspective and also allowed us to align deeper with the true purpose and the true meaning of this journey. Mm -hmm. And not only being with God during the challenging times, but being with God all the time during the great times and the not so great times. It's really being with God forever in all moments and putting God first. And it's a journey that we are all on and we are all perfecting, going deeper into perfecting, being with God all the time. Um, And yeah, so we want to talk to you about that. So what inspired the sermon was actually our last group coaching class with Jeff and Julia. And this is what we would like to share with you first is the insight that we received as a class, which was that happiness never comes from outside of us. It's not about the goals that we attain. It's not about the dreams coming true. It's about being with God now and choosing to be happy now. And while it's good to have goals, it's good to have aspirations, and it's very important to have dreams, it's not the main focus. And I think that when we are on this journey, we can forget that because we're used to chopping wood, carrying water all the time. And like the goals... They don't bring us the happiness that we're seeking. They don't bring us that fulfillment that we are seeking. We receive that from God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, Jeff and Shalia's teachings really teach us how to build true wealth, true abundance, to really honor our desires. And our desires, like Christina has mentioned, is an important part of our journey. It's completely acceptable to reach our desires, to manifest them, Mm -hmm. to honor them. Um, It's a part of our spiritual path. But the true goal, the true importance of living life is in service to God and Mm -hmm being in relationship with God, being in a real, a real relationship with God, where you don't just go to God when you need something. You don't just go to God when you're feeling bad. You don't just go to God when it's convenient for you. You go to God all the time, no matter what. You're loyal to God. You love God back. You cultivate a healthy and balanced loving relationship with God instead of a uh, more like a a Mm one-way unhealthy imbalanced Mm -hmm. relationship with God and it's the most important thing that we can do right it's about shifting our focus back to God Mm -hmm. and in every moment because Another thing that Shulia said in our class was that we are a community of peace. We are a community of love. We are not a community of upsets. And so it's shift. It's really shifting our focus from, from the challenge, from the obstacle, and focusing back on peace. And like knowing that the purpose of putting our attention 
on the upset in the first place is to bring peace there. The purpose is peace. And so we had an example happen to us this week. Yeah. It was a perfect learning lesson for this. Did you want to tell it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's a great lesson that taught us a lot Mm -hmm. and brought us deeper with God. So we use our car a lot. It gets a lot of use. And, um, like everyone, <laughs> well, like everyone, of course. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. so we had been driving our car to Jeff and Julia's and we were going there for a shift to cook for them and to do other things, of course. And it is currently at the time of this recording, deep in winter in mm-hmm. Northern Michigan and I haven't had that much experience with Northern Michigan winters. Did not know that my window was completely iced shut. I tried to open it and it broke the window because it was iced shut. So we had just arrived and the window was... It uh, wasn't like cracked. It was like all the way down. Yeah, the window uh, had went all the way down. 10 degree weather where like with like negative five wind chill, like very cold. Yeah, very cold. Also snowstorms, all of those things, right? And I had a completely exposed window and it was broken. And at the time as well, uh, we, you know, like did not necessarily have an abundance of extra cash to just go get it immediately repaired, right? So this circumstance had come up and I could have, I had two choices. I could have gone in the direction of ego, which would be of like upset, getting upset about it and allowing it to spiral me into a place of upset and feeling bad and um, not peaceful. Or I could go in the direction of God and love and peace and to not allow for this circumstance to upset me, not allow the external, my external reality to take away my peace. Now, did I still choose to move through all of the feelings? Yes, I did. But I did it from a place of peace. I didn't bypass it. I didn't just numb it out. I chose to move through it, but I chose to move through it with God. And I choose to, chose to move through it while not leaving my peace. So the whole shift, I focused on gratitude. So instead of feeling like, you know, my circumstances were against me or something like that, mm-hmm. which I could have easily fallen into, I focused on gratitude and I listed off all of the things that I was grateful for in my life Mm -hmm. that yes, dealing with a broken window in the middle of winter is not an ideal situation, but I am so blessed anyway, Mm -hmm. that all of my blessings and everything that God gives to me and has given to me, completely outweighs having a broken window. And so I had really realized that. Mm -hmm. That's like, wow, like this is a very insignificant event in comparison to eternity because we live an eternal life with God. I was about to say that. That was like something you kept saying was like how insignificant it was in eternity. Right. And that like it doesn't like it doesn't make sense to allow it to take my peace mm-hmm. and to make me feel bad when it's when I have God mm-hmm. because when I have God I can get through anything. Yeah. So we had that window open for a, a whole week. Yeah. And um ever it was like we had the choice every single morning of like what the experience was going to be like. Yeah. And we chose after like the third day, I think we were just like laughing about it. Yeah. And um, yeah, like we gave ourselves what we needed to support ourselves. Like 
the morning I wrapped myself in a blanket and like had hot coffee and like literally would wear like three sweaters I put like a scarf over my head but like I was like cozy right and right um because you know like we would we would have to drive on the highway right so high speed winds coming into the car super cold yeah and we properly prepared right, ourselves so, for that right so like it was constant it was a constant choice that we had to make of not allowing it to take away our peace it wasn't like a one-time thing it was like every single time we got in the car or that's just an example right it's like in every single moment but like with that specific example it was like every time we got in the car and um yeah so I felt like that was a good lesson for us mm -hmm. we just chose to make it like joyful and like kind of think that it was funny and also we reflected and thought about how in the future we would just like look back and laugh about driving in the winter with like a window down and thankfully actually uh it's up now we we brought it in so we are no longer driving with an open window god took care of uh, it well we took care of it too but we partnered with god right and we got it up before it got colder so right so yeah now we have another thing to be grateful for whenever we get into the car we just think about how warm we are and uh it also like gave us more perspective too of like the little the things that like we maybe take for granted mm -hmm. we don't think about staying warm when we get into a car we usually think about getting to the destination or maybe like the cleanliness, we don't usually consider the temperature. Right. And so now it's something else, like we've gone deeper into like feeling grateful for the little things in our life, well, the little things in our lives that really give to us. Right. And um, yeah, another thing that I wanted to talk about regarding that situation was that uh, we watched a sermon by Joel Olstein, and I think it was, called like being carried by the creator mm -hmm. and there's also another one called choose to be happy I actually think it was from the choose to be happy but he said like in every moment with every situation you have the power to think yourself into happy or think yourself into disappointment mm -hmm. and I thought that was really cool I never thought about it like your thoughts are creating your feelings mm -hmm. and so he brought up some people that were going through very, very difficult situations in their lives. Right? He always said how those people thought themselves into happiness. They, when they were asked how they were doing, they always said, oh, life's great. You know, like, I'm blessed. My life is blessed because they focused on the love. Yeah. And not on, on the obstacle. And so. Yeah, it just it reminds me of the experience that I had, which was a very real experience of choosing gratitude mm -hmm. instead of not. Right. And so I consciously thought myself into a place of true peace mm -hmm. with God. And um, yeah, to bring it back to God. God is found in peace. And God is found in happiness and feeling good god is not found in an upset right so what has been helping me lately is focusing my mind on god on connecting with god when i realize that i'm not connecting with god mm -hmm. consciously in that moment yeah. And another thing that just came to mind that Joel Olstein said from his sermon was that God created us to be happy. He created us to be joyful and he gave us the gift of life to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And so there's never any situation where you don't deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that this is a trap that we can fall into as well. It's like, oh, I can't be happy because of this or I don't deserve to be happy but God did not create us to like drag our feet through the mud every day. And he actually wants us to be happy and he wants us to be joyful because that's actually how we honor his gift. We honor his gift of life by choosing to enjoy it 
and choosing to love ourselves and choosing to be happy. And yeah. so this yeah. is how we give back to God. We give back to God by enjoying our life. Mm-hmm. We give back to God by enjoying everything that he's given us and everything that he gives us every single day. And by giving it back to him, by really genuinely connecting with him, getting to know him, being um, sincere in wanting to get to know God, to get to know him, Mm -hmm. not to get something from him, not Mm -hmm. to just enjoy his gifts, but to just be with God Mm -hmm. without any conditions without any agendas just be with god because god is truly the best right yeah it's realizing that nothing can take that away from you like nothing can take away your relationship with god and nothing can take away that peace that you share with him Mm -hmm. in every like no matter what's happening in your external reality and it's just about really prioritizing your inner life prioritizing how you feel versus the outside and that makes you like very powerful because yeah if we are looking to the outside we will always have a reason to not feel good this was something I had to work through as well was feeling like okay well my space isn't perfectly clean so boohoo I'm gonna feel bad until it's clean that literally makes no sense like you can be happy even if you know my apartment is not like pristine like perfect right and like it's always so choosing to like take responsibility for my inner reality and be like okay I need to organize my inner mind before the outer yeah versus just changing the outer so yeah and one thing that I also wanted to bring up from the car situation that was a really nice um lesson as well was I chose to completely detach myself and surrender and let go of my whole external life Mm -hmm. and just to devote myself completely over to God. Because the truth is, is that the external things that we have in our external life, it's nice, but it's not the most important thing. And it's also impermanent. It's just a, it's a temporary experience that we have this life our real life is eternal. It's, Mm -hmm. it's an eternal relationship with God and that our external life is not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The things that we have or the things that we attain or anything on the external is not as important as God. God is, is the number one. God is the most important thing and prioritizing ascension to God, to be closer to God, despite what it makes your external life look like, is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it it helped me to let go of control completely and to just surrender to God and be like, okay, God, I just choose to follow you. I don't care what my external life Mm -hmm. looks like anymore. I don't care what it looks like. I just want you. Mm -hmm. I just want God. Mm-hmm. And by letting go of that completely, I feel like it's allowing joy, that yes. that joy mm-hmm. and also that relationship to deepen and flow where it's supposed to flow and guide me where it's supposed to guide me instead of concerning myself too much mm-hmm. with the external when yeah. it's not the not the point mm-hmm. really. So yeah. yeah. Well, that feels good to me. Yeah, I feel good too. So I feel complete. There's nothing else that you'd like to say? No, I feel like we covered it. Okay, cool. sounds good. Well, please join us for a closing prayer followed by a closing alms. All right. Father, I accept your word into my heart. I will honor your will in my life and will follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me clarity in this teaching of union 
that I may be forever in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teaching with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name, Om, Amen. Speaking this prayer in your heart means you have accepted that you are on the path of awakening to your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teachings of union with God wherever you find them and purify your consciousness into perfect union with your creator. And please join us for closing ohms. Thank you very much. Namaste. Welcome back, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Danny and Christina, for a wonderful sermon. My major takeaway was to pay attention and realize whenever we are not consciously connecting to God, to become aware of that and then to return to God. Not just to be with God when it is convenient or when we need something, but to be with God all the time and being appreciative of God in order to give back to God. Ultimately, it is about the giver and not the gifts. And by honoring the giver and being in it for the giver, really being curious and getting to know the giver, we honor the relationship appropriately. And if you haven't yet, please um, leave a like and subscribe to our Church of Union YouTube channel. Now visit unionism.org for all past sermons, meditations, card readings, and our Sunday services. There you can also place your donation and tithe to support the Church of Union's message to the world. And please join us in our Unionism Spiritual Discussion Facebook group for an excellent live uh, discussion with uh, panelists in our after church tea time discussing today's message. Thanks again for joining us. Namaste.